Hi, for this video what we are going to do is we are going to do a hypothesis test, but this time we are going to use an alternative method for making a decision. For this one we are going to use what is known as a rejection region rather than using the p-value. So let's get started. For this what we have is we have a fast food restaurant claims that the mean sodium content in one of its breakfast sandwiches is no more than 920 milligrams. A random sample of 50 sandwiches has a mean of 923 milligrams. Assume the population standard deviation is 18. At alpha equals 0 0.05, do we have enough evidence to reject the claim? So as I was going through, I kind of highlighted some important words. The first one is that we're talking about the mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a test for the population mean, which means that we are going to either use the z-test or the t-test. We use the z-test if we know the population standard deviation, which we do, and we use the t-test when we know the sample standard deviation. So since sigma is known, we know that sigma is 18. This points towards us using what is known as the z-test. Um, we use the z-test when we know the population standard deviation. We use the... Um, t-test when we know the sample standard deviation. So since sigma is known, the other two things that we need to look at is we need to look at our sample size, and sample size needs to be greater than or equal to 30, or it needs to be normally distributed. Since we have n equals 50, we have a large enough sample size, and we also need to have a random sample. These are the conditions that the textbook that I currently teach from um, uses. So if you use a different textbook, make sure to refer to your textbook for all of the conditions that are required based on your text. So now what we need to do is once we've decided what test we're going to use, we need to set up our null and our alternative hypotheses. Remember that the null hypothesis must always contain equality, so since it says no more than, that means that our population mean mu has to be less than or equal to 920. And our alternative hypothesis is the opposite, and it has to be greater than 920. Remember that the null hypothesis must always, always, always contain equality. The alternative has to be um, an inequality statement. So our claim would be about the null hypothesis because of the fact that no more than includes it. Um, so when we make our decision, we will either reject the claim or fail to reject the claim based on the evidence. So for this one right here, this tells us that we have a right tail test. The tail of the test is always built on um, the alternative hypothesis. If it's not equal to, it's a two tail. If it's a right, if it's greater than it's right, if it's less than it's left. So if we read through this, it tells us that our random sample is 923. And since our claim is that it's no more than 920, we have evidence that points to the fact that 923 is greater than this. So we may or may not end up rejecting this. It really just depends on how likely it is to happen based on the sampling distribution. So what we need to look at is all of the other important information that we have for our, sam our standardized test statistic. So we have sigma is 18, we need our sample size, which is 50, and we need to know our alpha level. So these are the things that we must know in order to run the hypothesis test. If you don't have technology, um, using the rejection region is easier, plus it's kind of a little bit more like intuitive. You can just kind of look at it and see. With a rejection region, basically what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a rejection region. This is going to be our rejection region rather than our p-value. Um, remember the p-value is the probability or the area um, that falls at more extreme than our sample. Um, means, so that's where our test statistic is. So with the rejection region, what we have to do is we have to find our critical z-score that corresponds to an alpha of 5%. So 
if our test statistic falls in the rejection region, then we reject the null hypothesis. If it falls on the outside over here in this unshaded part, then the re, um, then we would fail to reject. So if it falls over here in the unshaded part, we fail to reject. If it falls over here, then we reject. So the test, the standardized test statistic is found by doing x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n. So this is the same even if you're using a p-value, calculating the standardized test statistic is the same thing. So x bar we would replace with the 923. The population mean mu we would replace with 920. Sigma we replace with 18 and n we replace with 50. So this is what we would plug into our calculator. And this gives us approximately 1.17851. So what we need to do is we need to find this z sub 0 value down here. This is known as the critical value. This is our cutoff region for the rejection region. And the way that you find it is you can look at a t-table. And um, with that, we're going to look for a one tail because it's a right tail. We only have one tail shaded and an alpha of 0 0.05. So let me pull up my T table. So we're going to look at the one tail 0 0.05, which is this column here. So I'm going to scroll down to this column and I'm going to go to the very bottom. And that column is 1.645. So it corresponds to the same critical value as a 90% confidence level. So the 1.645 is our cutoff. So what we want to see in order to reject our standardized test statistic, this value right here would have to fall in the rejection region. Since 1.17 is between zero and that value, it would be about here. So since it falls not in the rejection region, so since it is not in rejection region, we fail to reject. So we re fail to reject. Your conclusion is always reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. That is the only language that you use for your conclusion. So in this case, since our claim is about the null hypothesis, even though our sample mean was a little bit more than the 920, it's well within the range of values we would expect to see for this distribution. So for this, at alpha equals 0 0.05, we do not have enough evidence to reject the claim. So even though it is greater, it's not statistically significant. It's not strong enough evidence. So we do not have enough evidence to reject the claim. that the mean sodium content of breakfast sandwiches at a fast food restaurant have a mean sodium content that is no more than 920 milligrams. So even though our sample was slightly more, it's not statistically significant. It's not strong enough evidence to reject the claim. So it's well within the realm of what we would expect to see um, based on this sampling distribution. So most of the time with samples, they're not going to be exactly what the population is. So we just have to see if it's so unlikely for that to happen based on the sampling distribution. Um, and if it is, then we reject. If not, like this case, we fail to reject. As always, thanks for watching. Please continue to check out all of the video content that I have, and I continue to add more on a regular basis. 
Have a wonderful day.